All right, so today we're going to take a look at PLC Next Engineer 2024 along with an AXCF2152 running 2023.0.7 LTS. We're going to talk about Modbus RTU. All right, so let's go ahead and get the Modbus RTU library. We're going to go to plcnextstore.com. Once you're here, we're going to type RTU. That's going to bring up this free Modbus RTU library. As you can see, the supported controller is an AXCF2152. So we're just going to go ahead and download this library. All right, we're going to go ahead and extract this library. <clears throat> so we're going to extract all. We're just going to extract it to uh, the downloads folder for now because that's where we're going to use it. But if you were going to be using this permanently, you'd want to move this uh, to the folder where you're keeping your programs. All right, now that I've got my project started, we've got the RTU library downloaded, we're going to go ahead and add our I.O. cards. So we have all smart element cards in here. We have a serial communications card first. <clears throat> then we have an I.O. link, which is under functions. Then we have an analog input current 4 to 20. Then we have a digital input 16 non NPN. Then we have an SC A, which is a slot cover. And then we have a blank space, which is an SC. Let's go ahead and add our library. So we're going to go over to libraries. We're going to add a user library. Uh, since we know where it is, we're going to go to downloads. And it's going to be this RTU library. And we're going to go to file. And we're going to open up this library. Now we've added the Modbus RTU along with this added library of new function blocks. Let's go ahead and add our function blocks. The first thing we're going to add is our diagnostics block. Then we're going to add a Modbus RS485 Axial Line Smart Element Master. And then we're going to add a function code 3 because we're going to read a set of folding registers. All right, now that we have our function blocks added, let's get rid of some of these errors. So this is a sort of a status data block that gets connected to all of your blocks. So we're going to say Modbus data array. <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and make that a local variable. And we can attach that here, Modbus data array. And we can also attach that here, Modbus data array. All right. Now, these are your inputs and outputs for this specific card. So, let's say Modbus input data and Modbus output data. All right. We'll go ahead and make those external because we want to be able to interact with them outside of this program. And then last but not least, this is the data array of the Modbus registers that are coming back from your sensor. So we'll say sensor data. And we'll also go ahead and make that a local variable into our card. So we're going to open up our serial card. We are going to go to the data list. We are going to open the process data item. And what you'll find is there's two octet strings. So the I is for inputs, so we're going to attach the Modbus input data, and then the Modbus output data. Now we've attached all the data to this card. Now we can go back to our main program. All right, let's go ahead and start attaching some of these. So we're going to say a Modbus timeout, so we're going to go T pound 2S for two seconds. We're going to do the same thing for this timeout, so we're going to go T pound 2S. As far as the reset, we're going to leave that alone for now. We're going to come over to our RTU block. Now our pole interval, I'm going to do T pound 0.5 seconds. 
our slave address, I know from my device, is a uint pound 2. My start address is going to be a uint pound 0. And my data count, I'm going to read three total registers. All right, now that we have all that attached, let's go ahead and look at our sensor real quick. So I have the banner spec sheet open already. We're using an M12 FTH 3Q temperature and humidity sensor. Now, from this, we get the pinout, which is nice. We have the Modbus holding registers, as well as some information on what to do with those registers. And then we also have the communication settings. Now, as you can see, it's going to tell us a little bit about the factory defaults. Um, so if you look, you'll see 19.2 is the factory default. Our default is 0 on the parity. Our default address is 1. However, I know that I've changed that to 2. So let's go ahead and set that up inside the software. So if we come here for our RS-485 card, we can go to parameters. And we can go ahead and change this to 19.2, 8 bits. We'll look again at the parity. Our parity is 0, which is none. And number of stop bits is 1. All right, now that we've got our serial settings done, let's go ahead and write and start the project. So once we write and start the project, we'll see that down here, we'll start getting some numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to double click on our RTE project. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to activate the master block. So this block is now active, as you can see here. Once this block is active, we can go ahead and fire up the Modbus RTU function code 3 block. Now we can see that that's active. And we can actually do a send request. Now, to do a send request, we're going to see that data has showed up in the three registers that we're looking for. All right, now let's do something with that data. All right, let's go ahead and start manipulating some of these Modbus words. All right, so the first thing we're going to have to do is we need to get away from a word and get that to an integer. So we're going to go to int. Then from that integer, because we want to be able to see decimal points, we're going to turn it into a real number. Now. Because of the banner, and because we know that we need to do a little bit of division. <clears throat> so, we're going to come in here, and we are going to find the division block. Alrighty, so now that we've got this set up, we're going to attach the first Modbus word. So we're going to do sensor, and then data, and we're going to put it in brackets, and we're going to say word number one. So that's going to convert word number one to an integer, then to a real, and then it's going to be divided. So we need to go back to our banner data to figure out that starting address is one, and that's relative humidity. Now to get relative humidity, you need to divide by 100. So if we come back to here, we can put 100 in the division. Now we have division. So let's just call this H humidity and we'll create a local variable and we're going to actually just copy and paste this whole string down and we're going to say sensor data number two now we know that from this banner sensor number two is a temperature in celsius so in order to get temperature, it's divided by 20. So we are going to divide this by 20. And we are going to change this to H temp C. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to copy and paste this whole rung here. And we're going to change this to a 3 for the third register. And it's the same as before. So it's going to be temperature, which is divided by 20. So 
or then we're going to say H temp and we're going to change that to oops, we'll change that to and we're going to create new variables and then we're going to write and start the project all right let's get some real values out of this thing now so let's go ahead and activate our block we're going to get an x active then we're going ahead and activate our second block and then in this case i'm going to actually just enable polling so what that's going to do is i'm going to get a new modbus register every 500 milliseconds so as you can see the relative humidity in my shop is 15 the temperature in C is 22, and the temperature in F is 71. All right, now just as a quick last thing, I'm actually going to fill this little green cup with some pretty hot water here. Excuse the mess. And I'm actually going to slide this underneath the temperature and humidity sensor. And what we should see is that the humidity and the temperatures should change fairly drastically. Now, as you can see, the humidity is all the way up at 58% already. And if you'll notice, our temperatures are climbing a little bit slower than the humidity, but they are climbing, which means that it is working. All right, so let's just do a little bit of air handling. This is a very simple example of air handling, but it does work. So we take an ore block and tie it to the air of this block. And we tie it to the error of this block. And then we go ahead and direct address this reset. So if we do MB AXL, come down here to this master and we hit tab, and then we hit dot. We what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to direct address the reset. So now we are actually direct addressing the reset. The other thing I'm gonna do is tie the active from this into the activate of this, and I'm going to change the enable poll to true. <clears throat> so, now let's get some data. We'll hit X activate, that should activate all the way through, and then we should start populating data, which we have. All right, so now, if I shut off channel two, which is currently controlling my humidity sensor, <clears throat> We're not, we're going to get an X error over here. And what's going to happen is as that error is out, it's just going to reset the block. So if I turn the block back on, we'll start seeing a change in data as we get back to connecting to the sensor. So there we go. We've now reacquired the sensor without having to do anything.